it was an asset because it gave her insights into um, the thinking of different sections of the population, and it made her a real citizen of Guyana. She was also, I think, Mr. Speaker, um, very committed to parliamentary work, and she felt that whatever she did in the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th parliaments was for the greater good of our country and uh, the citizens of this country. I treasure her work, um, even though I was responsible for uh, asking her to leave the comfort of being the uh, shadow minister for public security. She accepted the responsibility for uh, foreign affairs. And although, of course, she said she didn't know much about it, she got stuck into it, let herself into the situation. And I think eventually she became very, very comfortable and looked forward to having a long career. She cherished the brief exposure uh, uh, between 2012 and 2014 as Deputy Speaker, and I think um, you know very well that she took that very seriously. So, Mr. Speaker, we have lost uh, a great friend, a parliamentarian, and I would like to take this opportunity at this point in time to extend our condolences to her husband, Stephen, and to her children, Nigel, who is a Coast Guard officer, and her daughter, Natasha who is an attorney at law. And I understand how they feel at this point in time, but I can assure them that we, in partnership for national unity and the uh, People's National Congress, feel a deep sense. The loss of Deborah Jan Packer. Deborah has served Guyana long and way beyond the call of duty. And it, is a, it has been a shock for all of us in these halls and in these chambers to know that she's not here to help us through the challenges that we face. Much has been said about her over the last two or three days. I want to remind this parliament and this house, recently on her motion on interpersonal violence, when Debbie two nights before called me up and said, Kathy, I'm waiting on the government to respond. We haven't had a response yet. I want us to do something about it. And I said, you know what, Debbie, when it comes to, when we come to meet in Parliament, let's have a little get together. And she initiated myself, Gail Teixeira, and also, um, well, really the three of us sat down as whips. And we were able to iron out what turned out to be minuscule differences. And at the end of that 20 minutes conversation, we were able to come to this house with agreement on something that is important and fundamental to the people of Guyana. And I want to raise that example so that people know that there was an aspect of Debbie that was about moving Guyana forward. It was about coming to positions of compromise. It was about being able to negotiate so that ordinary Guyanese would, would, would be able to benefit and be served, better served by this country. I am really, really sad that we lost her on a personal note. She was the one in here that would come over from her seat. Luckily, we sat so close to each other and she would say to me, Kathy, we're doing this because of that, that this is how it works and you got to remember this and that. So, on a personal note, I feel as though I lost a mentor. This house lost a great friend, a great person who was committed to Guyana, and I express my condolences to her family, to the APNU and the PNCR, and to all of us in this house. It will not be the same without Debbie. Um, Debbie was also a member of my church. She was a very staunch person when it comes to her faith and she really believed that we would be able to do better in here. Again, my condolences to everybody in this country. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, the government, the PDP Civic, acknowledges the contribution to the late Ms. Deborah Baca. She represented her cause and her party well, she was a keen debater and known from this side for her ability to echo and to put some of our members off as they spoke. She 
was one of few female deputy speakers, maybe only one of two, the first group being Janet Jagan, who was reported recently in the recent paper. We, on the government side, joined extending condolences to our family, for our party, for our death. Assembly and Thank you, sir. All the members of those who uh, may not be aware, the funeral for Mr. Baku will be held on Friday, March 20th at 3 p.m. Uh, the service will be at St. Andrew's Park. Uh, I have made a proposal as of this morning to members of the Parliamentary Management Committee for their blessing, and that is for uh, the Parliament, the National Assembly, to post a night of remembrances for Mrs. Baker. This is not the the fact that she did tender her resignation, the legal contribution of this, uh, that fact. And so it is proposed uh, to be finalized that Wednesday evening we will have a night of remembrances here. I'm told that the APNU will also be holding uh, its night at the residence of Mrs. Baker on Thursday, the 27th. So all members are invited to that as well. And it is also my proposal that, uh, and I've spoken to Mrs. Marcus Hospital this morning, that we could uh, perhaps have her brought to the place she loves so much and so dearly, that is, uh, to the full court, uh, for a brief period on the afternoon uh, of Friday, before she is um, taken over by some members of this house, she can, or casket could be born. Uh, over for service to follow three. So, as I indicated, these are proposals, and I would, um, would expect that there will be no uh, letter hindrance to what I have proposed. Our flag um, be flown appropriately on Friday, the 28th of March. On the members still on announcements, I wish to announce that the Parliament of the National Assembly of the Parliament of the in collaboration with the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, CPA, the British Parliament branch, that is, along with the British High Commission, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the Parliament of Scotland, proposed to hold a two-day seminar on the theme Managing Through Partnerships on the 3rd and 4th of April. Attending, uh, I would like you to be two members of parliament from Scotland who are coming to speak on their experiences working in a minority government construct. And also Professor Robert Hazel of the University of London. Professor Hazel is considered the world's leading authority on governance and more particularly on minority governance. And so we have been working as CDC to put together a program and that seminar is scheduled for the 3rd and 4th of April and two notice will be sent to every member uh, as to the activities that will follow. Um, members, I wish to note as well that we have received three volumes of the revised law of Ghana in purple and we wish to thank the Minister of of the legal affairs and all attorney general for that uh, gesture to the house. We recognize that in the month of March we have several birthdays, those for Dr. Mahadio, Mr. Chai Paul Sharma, Ms. Jennifer Wade, and today of course Ms. Ms. Valerie Gorilla Lowe. All the members of that set and announcement we go I now invite you to join me in a minute silence to remember the late great Deborah Lapper.
Presentation of petitions, presentation of papers and reports, etc.
motions relating to the business or sittings of the National Assembly to move the Prime Minister. Honourable Prime Minister, Minister Parliament, uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move the following motion. That standing order, number 10 to 38.9a, be suspended to enable the Honourable Minister of Finance to complete uninterrupted the meeting of the budget speech for 2014 at this sitting of the National Assembly of Monday, 24 March, 24. Thank you, Honourable Prime Minister. So, Honourable Members, the motion proposed for the budget uh, presentation to be made uninterrupted. Those in favour say aye. aye. Those against say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Introduction of bills. Public business. Government's business. On the member, we come to that time on our paper when we have the item known as budget for 2014. I invite the Honourable Minister of Finance to make this presentation. Mr. Speaker, 